Little blobs of filament got you down. At least you don't have a horse with a broken leg. Bamboo lab printers that are having a couple of issues. All this and more. Print Fix Friday, episode 98. Coming up on the triple digits. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you're struggling with some 3D prints, we're here to help. You can actually reach out to us, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com or tag us on all the social medias. But before you do that, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed if you haven't. It helps the channel grow and doesn't cost you a dime. Although if you do want to help us out financially, there's always Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel members. We've got a lot of interesting failures for you today and we've got a commonality. It's, well, little warpy. I think you guys will enjoy it. Let's jump right into fixing some of these fails. Anyone recognize this weird issue? Bed is perfectly level, Ender 5 Pro. Yes, while your bed might be perfectly level, your retractions are not set appropriately. What is happening here is during a movement, your printer is slowly purging out filament. This is likely due to some level of back pressure inside of the system. And as it's doing that, it's oozing a little bit. And this ooze makes for some really interesting lines. It's an easy thing to fix because you can just like shave it off with a knife if you, you know, wanted to be easy about it. But the best way to do this is to actually look at your retraction settings as well as coast. If you do have some back pressure inside of your system, it is good to make sure that you are pulling the filament out of the hot end reasonably fast. Let's go with uh, 45 to 55 millimeters a second. But when you push it back in, you want that to be nice and slow, about 20 to 25 millimeters per second. That should reduce some back pressure in the system, but for issues like this, Maybe an extra half a millimeter or so of retraction should pretty much fix most of what we're seeing here. With that being said, it's not a perfect solution. So try it out and see. If you keep having these issues, it's time to keep pushing up that retraction. Eventually though, once you get above like six, six and a half millimeters, we should be looking at things like temperature. Because if you are running too hot, your nozzle is naturally going to ooze because as you pull the filament back, it's going to stretch rather than pull away from the hot end itself. We can see here that they are retracting five millimeters at 35 millimeters a second, which is conservative, but because it is an Ender 5 Plus, it has a pretty large Bowden tube. Might be worth upping that to five and a half or even six millimeters. The speed is probably just fine in this case. I don't really think we have too many issues. Now, given that it is a matte black filament, we would wanna make sure that that matte material is not causing this. You can try dropping your temperature a little bit, but at least for black filament, I find that it actually needs to go up in temperature rather than down. What happened to his leg? Elegoo Neptune 3 Max and Cura. Well, we've got uh, what appears to be a horse, of course. That, well, oh, it's a unicorn. See, sometimes it's not always a horse. That's had some issues on its leg. Specifically, we have some issues with our extrusion here. The parts that we're dealing with on this horse are very thin and don't have a lot of connection to the build plate itself. What has likely happened with this leg is as the printer was moving, it ran into it. Whether you had a brim or your bed adhesion was actually pretty good, the part just bent out of the way while it was printing rather than it snapping off. That is apparently what happened here where the leg might've snapped off, be it from a retraction issue or a movement issue. In a case like this, first off, this model's not really designed to be printed in FDM. It's got tons of overhangs. It's very, very thin legs. Like th there are just some challenges that you're going to run into and there's really no easy way around it. With that being said, you could look at giving yourself a bigger brim and making sure that you have enough Z-hop. Z-hop is when your printer is moving that the nozzle actually moves away from the part and then moves back in. In Core XY machines, the bed actually moves down, but it is effectively the exact same thing that is occurring here. We are getting the nozzle out of the way for the move and then bringing it back to the part. With such a tall and lanky piece that we're dealing with, if you do need to print this, I might recommend utilizing your slicer to add in very thin amounts of printed plastic, like a 0.4 millimeter line that goes between the legs. This would give them some some stability and keep them from being knocked over, but shouldn't be that difficult to pull off. But I really think it's more of just bad print than anything else. With that being said, 
Don't forget, if you are going to be asking for help, giving some sort of settings for what's going on would be incredibly valuable. All that we know is that it is Neptune 3 Max, and they're using Cure. We don't know any settings, we don't know the filament, we don't know the temperatures, we don't know retraction, we don't know Z-Hop, we don't know anything. So a lot of the things that we do here end up being guesses. But in a case like this, it's probably the nozzle running into things. I'm surprised that it got as far as it did without any issues. So if you do want to try to make it a little bit more sturdy, you can try to wrap it with support material as well, but that can only get you so far. I would recommend, honestly, either cutting the model up basically straight down the middle of it and printing the legs so they're vertical in the air rather than something the body connects to. I think that would result in a better quality print. And while you would end up having a visible seam being that cut line that you made, I think that would be a lot easier to hide and clean up rather than dealing with the problems of trying to get the horse or unicorn to print standing up the way that you see it. Hope it helps. Getting warping on ASA. This is a really common problem for open air bed slinger printers, but this is not a bed slinger printer, but it is an open air printer. This is a Bamboo Lab P1P with a cardboard box enclosure using the box it came in, which is probably one of the better ways to build a really cheap enclosure for your 3D printer. So, you know, heated ish it is sealed for the most part they preheat the bed to 95 c for a few minutes to heat up the enclosure and it is a room that is at like 80 85 fahrenheit at least filament is glitter poly light asa so i'm assuming that is their galaxy green asa 260 on the nozzle textured pei at 95 no part cooling fan except five percent on overhangs no auxiliary fan 0.2 layers three walls has a brim tree supports on that large hole and the ASA parts have almost all warped like this. The first thing to do is raise that bed temperature. What we found with any of the polymaker materials that we've printed in, especially the styrene based plastics, they like a little more heat. For us, we run 105 to 110 degrees centigrade on the bed. Now, I don't run the textured build plate. In fact, we've been messing around with the brand new Honey Badger plates from Fabrico and I'll tell you, they stick like a hot damn. We just did some ASA parts on our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which it did actually finish to its credit. And uh, yeah, no warping at all. And there was absolutely no issues with any brim or anything like that. We just decided not to print a brim and decided to send it. I believe your bed temperature is going to have something to do with it. And in fact, when we are heating up a chamber like a P1P or an X1 Carbon, we like to leave the bed hot. I'll put it up to basically as hot as it'll go. I think on the bamboo, we don't go much past 110. I'll put it close to the bottom of the chamber and I will actually run the auxiliary fan a little bit. It helps circulate the hot air. I don't know if it works, but in theory it should. I let that sit for at least an hour. Let it really bake. Because if you have big parts like this that are thin but long, they're going to be a problem. If you can, I'd recommend printing this part vertically. It would reduce the cross-sectional area that is attached to the build plate, therefore giving you a much lower chance of having any warping. And based on the geometry that I'm seeing, you shouldn't need any support material. And if you do, it's going to be minimal at best. With that being said, I'm not a huge fan of tree supports on models like this. I think the snug supports do a better job and they don't have all that extra BS that you have to get rid of. When it comes to ASA and ABS, the styrene based plastics, they can be very picky about their environment. And while a hot room is a great place to start, it is definitely not the last. Cardboard is a phenomenal insulator and yeah, it should work. But if your build plate isn't hot enough, to get it to stick well, then we're going to have this issue. Again, you can look at raising your temperatures, but also make sure that your build plate is nice and clean. I don't have any experience with a Bamboo Lab textured build plate, but we do have one of our Honey Badger plates that is textured. So I'm gonna be messing around with that in the coming weeks. And if you guys do wanna see my opinions on the Honey Badger plates, let me know in those comments. We'll make sure to do a little short video about them because uh, the like, four prints I've done on him have been pretty good. I should have an affiliate link. I'm going to ask Hector for an affiliate link. <laughs> and oh yeah, by the way, if you guys want to 
See you, Tora Fabrico. Make sure to leave a like and get subscribed because that is coming soon, TM, when we do a really cool upcoming project with Fabrico because, for those that don't know, Fabrico is about three hours south of us, which means, well, that's a day trip down in Miami. And who doesn't like getting some pastelitos and then go hanging out with Hector? Good time there as far as I'm concerned. From the Elegoo Discord server, we have Moody Bird who's saying, why is the majority of my first layer see-through? Well, it appears that you might be running a raft. It's very common for rafts to do this, where you have a bunch of thick lines and then a bunch of thin lines. Rafts are, well, kind of antiquated, and I know that some people like them. Me, personally, I don't use them much anymore because they're old school. We used rafts previously because it was a sacrificial layer for ABS or ASA parts, where we knew they were going to warp, because back in the day, we didn't have heated beds, and we pretty much only really started with nylon and ABS materials that hate not having heated beds and hate printing on really crappy printers. Gosh, the old days are... It's like PTSD looking back at the old days of 3D printing, wrapping nichrome wire around a bolt that you just drilled with a drill press from the 80s and that actually ends up working marginally well is just... It's the thing of nightmares. I wish I had a lot of photos from back then, but suffice to say, it's not great. This is what looked like a raft, though. The big thing with ABS parts, like we saw in the Bamboo Lab P1P fail earlier, is that the more cross-sectional area that you have touching the bed, the more chances you have of the part shrinking and warping. With these lines that we see, if it does shrink, it's only gonna shrink on those individual lines, which should not create a large warp. Now, if that was one big piece Piece there, rather than those lines, the warp could be considerably greater than what we currently see. So I look at this and say, it's a raft, it's there for a reason, but you may not specifically need it. Now, if you do want to run it, you can, and it is kind of fun to look at getting that interface layer between the raft and your actual print to be as clean as possible so the peel off works really well, but I find that rafts can be quite wasteful, especially with printers now that have a lot of amazing advanced features that we don't necessarily have to deal with things like this anymore. If you want to use them, that's fine, but this is normal, nothing to worry about. Next up, a fail from Patreon member Stuart McClellan who is dealing with an SV06 that was having some issues. As you can see, it is the SV06 and it has a Y-axis homing failure. Let's take a watch. We can see them go ahead and home the printer. It will go ahead and home X first, then it goes and homes Y. But Y doesn't go all the way back. Did you guys notice the problem? I'll let you think about it. Have you noticed the problem? No? It's the bed cable. The bed cable should not be down there. In fact, it should be on the top side of the printer. I would say on the SV06 and the SV06 Plus, that is like their one major downside that they have is that the cable management is not really the best. On the SV06 and the Plus, the cable for the X-axis can droop down, but I find that it's not that big of a deal. We find though, that the cable for the Y-axis has a much higher chance of getting stuck like this. But I actually believe the printer was assembled odd, or at least wired odd, and the bed cable's running under it rather than over it, which is how it should be. For whatever it might be worth, I do believe this printer is also way too close to the wall that is behind it. The bed goes back quite a bit further than the back of the machine. I will say, I really do like the SV06 and the SV06 Plus. In fact, we've unboxed and looked at both of them here on the channel. Channel. We'll card that playlist so you guys can take a look. And I think that there's a lot of value. Coming soon, we will be doing an upgrade series on both of them. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure to get subscribed because it is coming. We are working on redoing the standing set. And in fact, you're going to see there's a new desk coming in there relatively soon. Once we have that desk in there and the new AC that shows up for me tomorrow for you guys yesterday will greatly make it more comfortable for me to be out in that space streaming more often. So if you do like hanging out on those live streams, stay tuned because they're absolutely coming. Member Gator from the Elegoo Discord is saying, anyone know what could cause these layers missing? And there are often quite a few answers to this question, and none of them are all that straightforward. But we can see the part is definitely warping some. It's not connected to the build plate down here at the bottom. A 
problem, but not an immediate issue that must be dealt with right freaking now. It is, however, something that we need to take a look at, because if it's not dealt with, the warping is just going to make a lot of these problems worse. The missing lines that we see do appear to be some sort of extrusion-based problem, and if this is warping with PLA, I'm going to hedge a bet and say you're probably printing too cold. Often warping is caused because you are just printing too cold. But on a big bed slinger like Elegoo does tend to make... Uh, by the way, do you want us to look at the Neptune 4 series? If so, let me know because uh, we can reach out to Elegoo and see if they can send some over to us. I like the Neptune 3 series and I thought it had a lot of value to it. But the Neptune 4 series with input shaping, well... And that's going to be a pretty big contender, but there's also the Anchor Make M5C coming out. So there are a lot of budget input shaping bed slingers coming out on the market. What do you guys think of these? It might be time to do a podcast on this because I feel like I called this a couple of months back in an episode where we talked all about the future of 3D printing. We'll card to that, where I talked about cheap bed slingers with input shaping being one of the pushes for companies. And yeah, outside of Bamboo and the Bamboo clones, that's what companies seem to be pushing for. So something to note there. But yeah, we might have some issues with our extrusion. And we also have some issues with ghosting. The lines that we see here, that is rippling from the tool heads. As it's changing that corner, it is resonating. Input shaping actually solves this. And you can add input shaping to most 3D printers on the market. But if you don't have to, there's not always a reason to do it. With that being said, it's not exactly an easy thing to dial in. Having extra things like the settings and all of that would be a little bit useful for something like this. But I would hedge a bet that we've got something going on with our extrusion. Check that you are not skipping as you are trying to push filament out. This can be a big issue if you are overrunning or outrunning your heater, which can be caused by printing too fast or simply not having enough temperature. Let me know what you guys think of these fails in the comments down below. We are just a couple of weeks away from episode 100, which is going to be a meme episode. So submit your favorite memes to me by emailing them over to me, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, and we'll make sure to include them in that episode. I think that one's going to be a lot of fun. It's been a while since we had a meme episode, and I think it's good to have them every now and then. Breaks up the monotony of the same thing over and over again. Let me know what you guys think of those fails in the comments below, but stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. I know you guys want it because she's been sleeping the entire episode. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. Oh, okay. Well, but you're going to try. I'm still going to go for it. We're going to get the belly. <laughs> oh, who's your good baby, huh? Who's your It's not you. We still love you, though. Boop. Oh, you didn't see the snoot boop. There was a snoot boop, I promise. <laughs> I know that you're probably like, hey, the cat's there. And yes, the cat is here. She takes after her dad. She's full of crap. And thankfully, just a generous sprinkling of fiber and a couple of cleanings of my tile floor, it appears the cat is doing considerably better. So A plus for that. If you are in our Patreon Discord, you know this. And in fact, you were there when I shared the reading as well as the x-rays uh, from Miss Victoria here. Thankfully, she's doing absolutely great. So let's get a like for the cat. We're glad to have her back on the set where she belongs. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to support the work that we do here on the channel, you can do so for as little as $1 a month. But the $10 tier and higher gets you the ability to come hang out with myself and the entire crew at 3D Musketeers on our private Discord server. We'd love to have you. It's a lot of fun. In fact, I'm probably hanging out there right now. But right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can see failures and how we fix them throughout the years. And right next to that will be my six months with my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. While things have gotten better, and they're still not to where I want them to be. I will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.